Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be making handmade cards that involve some money, 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 money. That's right, we're making DIY greeting cards that can also hold some nice green cash. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll jump right into the first card idea. These first few ideas require very minimal supplies. You could probably make them with things you already own. So for this first card, I'm making a shopping bag uh, cash holder. Um, this, all these ideas can also hold checks as well. I have a piece of cardstock cut down to size as well as a note card. And I'm just putting some double-sided tape on three sides of this small rectangle shape first. Then I will peel up the backing of that and stick that on to the front of my note card. And that's when I realized I skipped a step. I should have added my shopping bag handles, AKA my string to the shopping bag first, but no worries. I'm just gonna put a dot of glue behind the piece of rectangle cardstock, just lifting it up a little and trying to wedge that string in there. And it still works either way. I ran a word die through my die cutting machine earlier and now my word die cuts and its shadow is ready to go. I'm just gonna put some liquid adhesive on the back and attach that. And I put more glue on this entire die cut piece and now I'm gonna put that on the front of my shopping bag. Next, I'll work on my sub sentiment. I've already placed it on my acrylic stamping block and then I'll stamp the ink this, I'll ink the stamp, excuse me, on uh, some Versamark ink, uh, put that on my little cardstock strip. And then I'm gonna use some really fine white embossing powder to cover my stamped image. I'll flick off any excess. And then my heat gun is in the background, nice and hot. So I'll just bring it to my sentiment strip and melt that powder. I just love the nice crisp image you get when you heat emboss a stamped image. Alrighty, I'll pop some foam tape on the back of this sentiment strip and peel off the backing and I'll stick this right onto my shopping bag and this card is pretty much finished. I just need some cold hard cash to put in this bag. And I love how this card can be given during any occasion, a birthday, a congratulations, a going away, a promotion, whatever, whatever the situation is, this is a good, great card to have on hand for any last minute gifts or cards you need to get. If that previous card was a little bit feminine for you, I've got a masculine take on it uh, this time around. It's going to be same principle as like a card pocket or a cash pocket, but um, this time it's going to be a like shirt pocket instead of a shopping bag pocket. I'm just working on stamping up my custom background. It's going to be plaid since this will be a more masculine card. I thought making a more masculine background or shirt would be appropriate because guys like cash too. I mean, I know nowadays people will just Venmo <laughs> everything, but have you ever been disappointed when receiving a card full of cash? I didn't think so. There's two kinds of people that give cash as presents nowadays. Number one, you're just old school and you like to carry cash, you like the feeling of cash. Um, it's tangible, you can see exactly how much you're spending and where your money goes. And two, you're just a big procrastinator and you're getting the gift at the last minute and cash is all you had in your wallet. Either way, I've got some money card holder ideas for you. I'm going to choose one of these backgrounds, the more messed up one basically, and I'm gonna cut it down to a square and then I'm going to uh, choose one side of that square and kind of cut it at an angle so it re resembles a shirt pocket. Again, you don't need any uh, you know, die cutting machine or dies for this. You can really hand cut it or use a paper trimmer like I'm using here. And to add that shirt pocket touch, I'm gonna go in with a white gel pen and add some faux stitching details to my shirt pocket. I'm gonna go back to the same technique as before with putting a double-sided adhesive on three sides of my shirt pocket, the sides and the bottom, so the cash doesn't fall out, obvi. I'll peel off all of this backing, and I found that using double-sided tape for this is much uh, easier than using liquid adhesive to form your pocket, just because I, I think the tape will hold better than glue would. 
then I will add my word die cut to the front of my pocket. And then like before, I'm gonna add a nice little sub sentiment as well as the dot over the J. I'll stick a $20 bill in there just to make sure everything works and nothing's falling out or too loose. Then I'll run my tape runner over the front of my note card and then stick my cash holder pocket thingy on top and now my card is finished and it came together in a snap. For this next card, I wanted to make a handmade card that would show the money, like tease the money, like show me the money. But um, I didn't want the recipient to have to tear anything in order to uh, retrieve the money because, you know, card makers have feelings too. So using my square metal die, I'm tracing out where I want my little windows to be. And then I'm going to place my die on top of my note card and run it through my die cutting machine. You can place it as many times as you want. I wanted to create four little cash windows. So that's what I'm doing um, four different times. And then I will erase all the pencil marks. Then on the inside of my card, I already cut down a piece of acetate to A2 size. And with some more double-sided tape, I'm going to adhere the acetate piece on the inside of my note card. After I peel up all of this backing, I'm going to place my acetate right on the inside. And it should be a perfect fit, but we know if you have any excess, you can always just cut it off. Next, I'm going to bring back those die cut squares I um, had already cut for my little windows. And I'm going to use that as, as a template to um, place a, on a second piece of cardstock, and you'll see why. So I'm just putting those squares down and laying my note card over top, and then I'll trace those squares. I'll just trace the top of those squares, I should say, because I'm going to create little slits that the cache will go in. I'm repeating the process, so I'm laying down the squares, laying down the note card, and then just tracing a line over the top of those squares so I know where to cut my top slit. I'm gonna bring in a metal ruler as well as my X-Acto knife and just go over those lines that I uh, penciled in before. The purpose of these little slots is that so my, re my recipient can see the card from the outside um, peeking through the windows, but on the inside, they can just uh, take the cash out of those little slots and not have to ruin the card or rip the card to get it. So now I'm putting some more double-sided tape onto my note card, but this time I'm only placing it on the sides and in the middle because I want the top part of the each of the little windows open so that the cash can move freely within it. And you'll see what I mean in, uh, in a second. So I uh, just peeled up the backing of the sides um, because I need the bottom of the window to hold my cash in place. I hope that makes sense because once I uh, put the cash within these slots, I don't want it to fall through all the way to the bottom. And so that's what the tape in the middle of the windows were for. And so now I'm just making sure that each slot is uh, big enough and have, has enough room for the cash to slide freely up and down. Then once I close my card, I realized that these little windows are looking kind of plain. So I decided to uh, change them into actual presents. I'm gonna do that by cutting out some squares of uh, black cardstock, the same size as those windows, and then I'm gonna just cut little strips. Then I'll put some tape on the back of those strips, and those are going to form little ribbon-like things for my present. Um, this way, uh, it's, you know, it, I, I know it'll stick on the acetate, and it makes for some added interest to my card. To make these boxes resemble presents even more, I'm just going to get out one of my Micron pens and draw little bows to the top of each present. And so next I'm going to add my die cut sentiment on top. I've actually changed it out to a white one later just to help make it stand out more. But this card is finished and you can see the sneak peek of the cash from the outside. Then see how easy it is to grab the cash from the inside without destroying the card. This next card turned out to be my favorite. I wanted to 
use my uh, existing supplies and repurpose them for something else. So first I'm gonna create my background. I have this fun balloon stencil that I've used many times before. And I'm going in with some gold ink um, that doesn't show up like really. <laughs> so I went back in with some Distress Oxide ink to help darken that to uh, give it more depth. And that worked out a lot better, but I still wanted some shininess. So I just went over the top of what I stenciled with some metallic ink. So I layered the inks. I went to Distress Oxide ink first, then metallic ink over top. And that gave me the dimension and texture that I wanted to my background. I wanted a very sophisticated money palette so I'm going in with just various shades of dark greens and golds and then for some more added interest I'm going to go in with a white colored pencil and add that little curve of a balloon I don't know what you call that shine um, whatever it is I added it okay and then I'm going to go in with this fun chapstick die or lipstick die like it's supposed to cut out a window and then you place um a chapstick or lipstick in it to give us a gift or to put it on a tag but i thought you know what i bet i could use it for money cards so it the painter's tape ripped my card, whoops, um, but I'll show you how I hide that later. And so when I got this die, I made sure to get the little um, shaker windows to go with it. I don't know what you call it. It's just the lipstick window, chapstick window. And um, it'd be great if you wanted to give that as a gift, but I wanted to see if you can use it for other things besides chapsticks. So, or lip balms, I should say. Um, hashtag not sponsored so what i did with this little window is that i cut the uh tiny slit on one side of this window just the the top side so i'm cutting down that little flap and so it only um one of the sides is open and i wanted to make sure it was the top one that was open and then i'm going to get out a note card and this whole card panel is going to go on top of that note card and I'll show you what I do so I'm gonna roll up my 20 the cash doesn't need to be too tight here um, as long as it fits within this lip balm pouch it should be fine and I'm gonna make sure that the edge of the 20 sticks out of the top and I'll show you how it works so you got the pouch with on your uh, within your panel or on top of your panel I should say and your recipient receives a card and then they're gonna pull out that 20 without destroying the card and I think that is so cool and I hope it works because this is the first time I'm trying it so I'll roll this 20 back up and then I'll place it in there uh, because once this money's in there, it's in there. <laughs> I mean, there's kind of really no redos of this. So I'll take some more double-sided tape and put that on the back of this front panel. Then I'll peel off all the backing and then place this front panel onto my note card very carefully. And it's okay if, you, uh, if it's a little off, you can always cut off the excess. And now my cash pouch is on there securely that money will not fall out unless someone pulls on the edge of that uh, 20. And this is going to go in an envelope anyway. I added a word die cut and some gems to hide my mistake from earlier. And this card is finished. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got some ideas from this video. And I hope you stick around for the next video.